Hurricane Aaron now a borderline Cat 5, if not already a Cat 5, a major hurricane out here just north of the Leeward Islands. I'm meteorologist Robert Spetta. Let's break down this storm system, some of its impacts. No hype here, just explaining where it's at right now and where it is headed. And the key thing right now and over the course of the last 24 hours, this has rapidly intensified. Going from a tropical storm with winds of 70 miles per hour, now up to 155 and a pressure down to 923 millibars. To put that in perspective, rapid intensification, the definition, is just 35 miles per hour over the course of 24 hours. We have doubled that here uh, with Aaron. Now, you can see a, the classic buzzsaw shape with this. Outflow loft, you have inflow, it's moving over warmer sea surface temperatures. These are all clear indicators of a strengthening storm system, and it's moving into these areas for further intensification, even as it moves off there towards the west. We know it's this strong it's not just a guess it's not the uh, meteorologist trying to make it seem stronger we have recon we have the c-130s and the p-3s flying through this dropping those drop sons but also the p-3s have a da tail doppler radar giving us a good core image of the structure of this storm and that helps us ingest uh, into the models and kind of gives us a more accurate initialization and a more accurate forecast as we look ahead now i say it's borderline cat 5 but maybe even by the time you're watching this here it would already be a cat 5 according to the nhc they do project it now to get up to that intensity just north of puerto rico where some of the outer rain bands are going to be impacting but the core of those destructive winds are going to be offshore and in fact that core destructive wind you can see it right in here it's right about where my mouse is right there you see that that little circle of being uh, viewed here on radar that is that inner eye wall now these outer rain bands definitely you know tropical storm type weather uh, a lot of heavy rainfall we even have tropical storm watches in place across parts of the leeward islands you know th that's definitely some impacts but it's not you know when we when i say cat four cat five it's not going to be directly influencing these islands here it's going to stress that and it, even as we look ahead and i know there's that westerly track a lot of people are still saying yeah this is going to hit florida no no all guidance uh, the atmospheric dynamics are showing it to move towards the north. And no point in this storm's forecast did we ever say it was going to hit Florida. Now, there's some people who were showing those long-range models originally, and those are still floating around. You just make sure you're getting your information from a place you trust. That's all I want to really suggest here. Taking a look at the extended outlook, though, um, this is moving us still over warm sea surface temperatures. But as it starts to turn towards the north, I do expect it to encounter a little bit of shear. And that's why it does come down from a Cat 5 to a 4. You can see right there. But still a powerful storm east of Florida. And it's going to pass Florida by, you know, 500 miles plus here uh yes the trend has shifted a little bit west but really we're starting to see now that northerly churn uh take place here so the projection continuing to uh, meet our expectations here of that northerly churn kind of threading the needle between a high pressure ridge over bermuda and one over the south and east so with that said we have confidence, we have reasoning why we expect to churn, but what are going to be some of the impacts, especially along the east coast of Florida? Because, like I mentioned, that core of destructive winds is out to sea. A lot of people are joking, fish storm, I get it. And that core is not going to be impacting people directly. But uh, as I mentioned, the Caribbean still seeing these showers out there. And for the coastal areas of the United States, specifically the First Coast here at First Coast News, um, we're going to be looking at an increase in rip currents, uh, high tides, and also some rough surf. In fact, the breakers could be up to six to seven feet there by Monday over towards Tuesday. So even good surfers, you're probably looking at that and you're going to go, yeah, let's get out there. Let's get in some waves. It's going to be extra sketch uh those swells coming off of this a cat five to a cat four that's going to be powerful wave action so it the not expecting a lot of rain along the coast uh, if any but those waves are definitely dangerous in their own right as long as you stay off the beach or you stay out some of those tidal like low-lying flood prone areas you probably think it's just a breezy day a little tropical atmosphere as this passes uh east of florida but um Still a little too close for comfort, I'll, I'll admit it, and that's one reason why we're continuing to track this storm here at First Coast News, because there is going to be those indirect impacts, not to mention 
you know, we're always tracking the tropics out here, trying to keep you posted, make sure you make proper decisions. For example, if you have plans to go to the Bahamas, probably going to be fine, but I would just be watching out for uh, some real big waves there in those outer rain bands as they pass by here on Monday over towards Tuesday. I'm meteorologist Robert Spen. I always do my best to at least educate, keep you posted, and stay informed here at First Coast News. If you want more information, check out firstcoastnews.com slash hurricane central.